Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast. And today we've got a guest who goes by many names in our reselling community. He lives in New York and we're going to find out what it's like reselling and thrifting in the Big Apple. Hey, I'm Carboot Chris. I'm a full-time UK online reseller. I operate mainly on eBay and also whatnot, but also some other platforms as well. I'm going to bring you regular podcasts all about reselling, hopefully to keep your company, to entertain, or maybe to educate. Who knows? Welcome to the Everything Reselling Podcast. Hello and welcome back. It's Series 2, Episode 9 of the podcast. Um, I appreciate you being here, whether you're watching live on YouTube or you're listening back on Spotify, Apple, Alexa, um, Google, whatever. I don't know. Wherever you're listening to this, thank you so much for listening. I'm a full-time reseller. My name's Carboot Chris, and um, I operate mainly on eBay, but I also operate on WhatNot as well and some other smaller platforms. And we do these podcasts. We chat to different people in the reselling world, all over the world, actually. And um, we just find out how people do stuff and we just chat about reselling things. So thank you for joining us. And today we have a special guest from New York City. And uh, we're going to find out all about thrifting in uh, the Big Apple, one of the biggest cities in the world. Should be interesting. And uh, we'll bring him on now. Uh, he goes by many names and we're going to find out which one he prefers. Here we go. Hey, Rob. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody in YouTube land. It's, <laughs> I guess today I'm Bob. I could be Bob. Well, usually, uh, I'll, I'll make that short. I'll make that story short. I, cool. um, I changed different jobs. And when I was, uh, I used to own a restaurant and the restaurant was called Bobby's. And then when I went back okay. and then unfortunately, when I, when the business folded, I went back to my old job and, uh, in the restaurant business and, um, there was already another guy in there named Bobby. So then I had to go back to Rob, which I was many years before. So a lot of people, they know me by different names. And, um, but that's, but I, I, I I'm not very, I'm not very hung up on that. Like if somebody calls me Bob, they call me Rob. You've got all kinds of names because I've, 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 I actually actually wrote them down because I thought, which ones are you going to prefer? Because I've got Rob, I've got Bobby, I've got Krillin, I've got a long story short, Ooh. I've got Bob's Blazers. Yeah. Well, which one shall yeah, I call well, you? The, and, and I was always told you should keep one name, but then I'm just kind of all over the place. I, th but... I think you need to like, I think you need to streamline your branding a bit and just be known by one yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I know um, that's Rob. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna call you Rob. Um, Perfect. Do you want to introduce yourself? To, tell us, sort of, you know, what you're about. Okay, I'm Rob, and as Chris mentioned, in, in for for the sake of transparency, I'm just outside of New York City uh, because I know a lot of people. They're gonna think New York City. They're yeah. gonna think uh, Times Square, and yeah. uh, they're gonna think of. Uh, well, I know you. You went to Rosie O'Grady's, right? Isn't that where you went? Yeah, uh, we did. New York, um, New yeah. Year's, New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. Uh. So, so that you're gonna think of Rosie O'Grady's. You're gonna think of Times Square. You're gonna think of that. That's particularly just Manhattan. I live. Uh, let's say there was no traffic because obviously there's traffic all the time. Uh, yep. But I live about. Um, I want to say, thirty to forty minutes east. Of New York City, which I know people sounds crazy because wait, New York City is, is on the water, so how could you live east of it? But I'm hmm. on a I live on a place called Long Island, and it's oh, a yeah. long and um I'm sure people are not interested in the history lessons, but if they are, uh most of it is named after British towns. Like have you ever heard of the Hamptons? Um, um you know yeah, I have actually, it, yeah. There is some British sort of name towns, isn't there? Well, it's all British. Uh the the it's uh, like that part is called Suffolk. I know you have either a, a, yeah. a county or say name Suffolk. County. One of county, the places, yeah. one of the one of the towns that I go to that I, I do sourcing in is called Huntington. I know you guys have a Huntington. Um, uh, so so they all, you know, I don't get into the whole history of it, but obviously, as you know, 
you know, New York was a British colony. So, you know, right. British and Dutch. So some places are some places have Dutch names. Some places have British names. And then some places have the indigenous Native American names. Yeah. So that's basically that's basically where you so because you'll you'll say like, what's a Massapequa? And you're going to say, you know, but that's the name of a town. But that was just okay. a that's a obviously not a British English name. Yeah, that's yeah. a, you know, um, yeah, that's a like I said. So I'm from just outside of there. I do uh, at times go into New York City proper. Ne- yeah. Never into Manhattan to source for merchandise because it, it, you really ha- no, have to know what you're doing to to go you know but but we call the outer boroughs i'm sure people have heard of queens in brooklyn i'm sure people have yep. heard brooklyn you know that's a that's a, a bar they call it a borough i don't know if you guys use still the same things but, but it's where um, that's a borough. new york new york city fc is around there isn't it uh new york city fc i believe they were playing in yankee stadium in the bronx is that that's is where that i close? believe uh no it's not. Oh. It's. I mean, yeah. I mean, on on a map, it's close, but to uh, yeah. you know, it it, reality, it could be a two hour close. commute. I've but been it's there. not. You know, it's in the Bronx. Yeah, we've been Yankee there. Stadium. It, it felt like it was a bit rough. <laughs> Is it rough? That's a. That's a. You you could. Don't worry. I don't get. Off, I'm not. I'm not going to get offended. It's Bronx. It's that's like the definition of rough. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's... I mean, we, when we got off the tube to go to the stadium, because we did a stadium tour at, at the Yankee Stadium, and um, yeah. we kind of looked around and thought, like, we're, we're not snobs or anything, but we looked around and thought, I think we'll just stick to the stadium, you know, and we weren't going to have a wander. Absolutely. It, it, it was, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, it was, you know, Yankee Stadium. I mean, it it is, and... The, it's ten times better than it was in when we were kids. It right. was worse, if you could believe. It. You know, in 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 the seventies and eighties, it was. I mean, it was very very rough. But mm. um, you know, that's you know that's what. Of course, my parents really got to take us there. There's other. We went to go see the crosstown rivals, which were the Mets. Um, which is in a little bit better of an area, you know. Mm. But it's uh that would be in Queens, and they're connected. Okay. Queen, you know, you can kind of look at the map. I know yeah. when it, talking about the logistics, it's kind of complicated. You know, it's kind it's not like grids, but um, but definitely is. But I, I there are some thrift stores in Bronx that I'm curious about going to, uh, but they're difficult. You know what I mean? Because mm. you gotta you gotta know where you're going. You know, mm. and you want your car to be there when you get inside. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just a quick thank you to Ryan. I think Ryan has dropped me a. Uh, super chat or something there. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate that. Um, really appreciate it, Rob. Um, so you've got a typical, uh, what I would call a typical accent of a New Yorker, right? So have you lived in New York all your life? Yes, I've lived here all forty-four years. And how long have you been I'm... reselling then? And, and what did you do before reselling? You ha- you have touched on it slightly. Sure. Okay. Um... Before reselling, I was working in the restaurant business. I was a bartender. Oh, there's my buddy. There's uh, Scotty Dump, from Dump California. Don't the dad. Welcome. Yeah. Yes, he was my my co-hosting uh, partner in the other show. Um, he uh, so um, before reselling, I was I was uh, what was I saying? I was working in the restaurant. I was a bartender. Before yeah. I was a bartender, I was a bar owner. And but when I had when I had lost the business uh, in 2008, I had gone back to college, which 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 was a regret of mine, not finishing getting my college degree. OK, right. Uh, but I went I went back to college after um, after, you know, I closed up shop. But I, I mean, I went back to my bartending job, but then I was doing part time bartending and part time college. I was getting my degree in accounting. Uh I know it's not very exciting, but I just was, you know, I figured I need to take something. And I ended up finishing that. But then, and then subsequently, I uh, I had found some videos on YouTube, people reselling. I had mm-hmm. originally, in, I want to say in 2001, maybe, 
maybe even the 90, late 90s, early 2000s, okay? Right. Even before I got into the restaurant business, I used to buy and sell cars oh, um, right. on eBay. On eBay. On eBay. Right. And okay. Yes. So That's early it, eBay days because eBay's 96, I think, did they start? That's pretty. This early. was very early eBay days. I didn't take any. I didn't even have PayPal. I would have to. They would mail me a no check, check, and then I got to wait for the check. You well, know, wait for the check. Company, there was a company called No Checks. Remember? I don't know if you remember that or if you had it in the US, but we had one called No Checks. It's a bit like PayPal. It's kind of an incarnation of PayPal. Yeah, we we. I I would just basically I would wait for the check. And then once it would clear, I would, you know, message them back and say, OK, you can come pick up the car, oh, right. you know, and then I had some crazy stories with that. But see, because what happened was I'll make it short. Uh, we used to be able to sell what's called open title cars, meaning I would buy a car from somebody like a damaged car. Right. Something that, uh, you know, the, the hood or or the uh, the door is damaged, whatever it is. So I would buy it at a heavy discount. Yeah. And then me and friends of mine, you know, guys who I knew in the business, we would repair it, you know, cheaply because we we all knew people who had parts. And, we, you know, because when you're in that business, yeah, you know, you I'll get the parts cheap. cheap and, and, yeah. I mean, I was never a master mechanic, but I was handy. I know how to use basic tools and I had other friends that would help me out, whatever, whether whether it was paid, they would do it cheaply or, you know, or people I know friends would help me out. And then so I would be listed on eBay. And now when you sold it on eBay. Like I said, the um, I would sell open title. So what would happen is I'm buying it from person A, the car. And right. now on the title on, on a car, you, it has, you know, the 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 the, the seller's name that's okay. actually printed on. Yeah. And then on the bottom, you would have the new you would write your name in and yeah. then you bring it to, you know, whatever. But what I would do is I would just keep it blank. So I would sell it on eBay. And then now the new guy coming to buy it, he would be the one to fill out yeah. buyer because see, you don't want to have to fill it out because you, you don't want fill an it out. Extra you have to pay. owner, do you? Well, it's not about extra owner per se. It's about once you once I sign it, now I have to pay taxes, I have to pay fees, uh, I have to, right. and in and in order for you to to sign, now I have to have insurance for the car. Because what I would do is I would just keep the car like in a, in a in a back driveway with no insurance, you know, because I wasn't driving it around, so I didn't need insurance. But yeah. with this, then eBay changed the rules. Well, years later, that you're you're not allowed to sell open title cars anymore, so it makes it really okay. difficult. You have to be like, yeah, it, mm. it, you know, so it, they make it hard, which is fun, you know. It's yeah, things change. Change the rules, don't they? So you, you sold cars and then you went into the restaurant industry. Can we ask what, how did it, it didn't end well in the, in the restaurant, did it? So how, no, how did it, it, what happened? Can we talk about it? Sure. So um, I had, I was working like originally, I, so I'm, I'm leaving high school and, you know, we graduate high school in America, right? 18 years old. Mm -hmm. um, so um, finished high school. And then um, I I was going to I went to a community college. Ironically, the community college which you had one of you had a Nassau County Bears jacket. Oh, yeah. Ironically, yeah. I mean you have to understand it's so, it's it's a small local college. It's not right. like a large university. Like it's so I even at the thrift stores now I I wouldn't I couldn't find them, you know. <laughs> but I went to that school. Um, you know, it, it was it's it's a look because I didn't know what I wanted to do. It was a local school, whatever it was. So I started. I was taking. I started taking some accounting classes, and I was doing okay. So I was like, "All right, I'll stick with this." And then subsequently, when I was working for, in the restaurant business while I was doing that, I had other people who wanted to get into business. You know, they're like, mm -hmm. "Oh, I'm gonna open up a place and do this and whatever it is." You know, and and, it, and when you're 18, 19, 20 years old, you have a lot of energy. You have a lot of ambition. You have a lot of everything. So uh, I had hooked up with one guy who was working around the corner at another bar restaurant that we used to go to after work. And uh, his name was Joe. And he was in his 40s and I was in my 20s. So we figured the partnership would work well because he had the experience and I had the energy. But then when ha then we ended up, we found a, a location and then we put deposits that, you know, a guy who was looking to retire, one okay, restaurant yeah. owner. 
So we were going to buy the restaurant from him. We had gone through a whole processing to get, because, you know, you need a license. I'm sure in UK, you can't just sell liquor. I'm sure you need a license for the yeah, liquor. Yeah, you have a license, yeah. You, know, you didn't have a license. So we went through these processes. We had to get the licensing. You had to do all this stuff and everything. And then kind of at the last minute, my partner backed out. He was remarried in his 40s. And he his wife kind of said, you know, whatever it was. And he, he was like, you know what? Place is kind of small. Might not be enough business for the two of us. You know, not enough room oh. for the both of them. So I was still, first of all, I was upset because we spent all that money on the, the fees and all that stuff and all that time. Yeah. And the time looking around at different places, whatever it was. So uh, make the story short. But he knew more of the back of the house, meaning the back of the house is the kitchen and everything. The yeah. Front of the house is the dining room because I, I had always worked in the front of the house with the customers directly, not in the back. Yeah, yeah. So that was one of the biggest mistakes because I didn't really know the back of the house, and then I made a lot of. And then once I, I just kept making mistakes, kept making, and I was only twenty four, twenty five years old. And then once, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, we, you know, they had the big stock market crash. And I know yeah. it happened in UK. It was affect people in you it, all over the world got affected by it. You know? All over the world, yeah. All over the world. So then you had high unemployment, and then I just couldn't hold on. Uh, I got involved with something called credit card. I know I don't make this whole. You can make this one whole thing a whole on the show. Something called credit card factoring, basically where they give you upfront money based on your credit card sales. I think right. PayPal they do this too. Like they they used to take like money from your transactions and they would give you money or whatever you can get, but anyway yeah, you can get a loan and then pay it back and yeah but per, by percentage of your sales yeah but anyway exactly. it, it, it's it, you know it's like a heroin because that's what happens is when you get busier you have to pay it back faster by virtue of more transactions because they're taking right. a piece so so then what happens is at the end okay you're paying it back then now you need more because it's like you because it's kills your cash flow but that's a whole other thing so that's when i left there I, I i went out of business i went back to my old job and then i went back to college i went i went back to college and then finished my degree and then when i was in college i i that's when i had, you know was watching some youtube videos because i had already done ebay and uh but i'd started out being like a lot of people here um a garage sale reseller you know oh, yeah. and s selling everything you know whatever you see if you, you go to a garage sale you know, you see something, you buy it. And then, you know, you look it up or whatever it is. And at the, at the time, I didn't even, when I first started selling, I didn't even have an app on my phone. Like there were times that I would like drive home and then look it up on my desktop, you know, uh, and then see if it, you know. But then after a while, then I started niching down, which is something yeah. I recommend. You know, I'm sure mm. you're going to ask me about that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I definitely, so, all right, so what else? Uh, what what platforms are you operating on, Rob? What what platforms do you right, sell on at the minute? Yeah, right now is only eBay. I was doing some Facebook Marketplace. Oh, um, hate it. A couple of years do you have ago, the same problems I, as we have here in the UK. It's a bloody nightmare. It's like the Wild West on Facebook, right? What, you mean just for people? They say they're going to show up. They don't show Idiot. up. Idiots on there, you know. Yeah, yeah. I get a lot of that. Um, but that's that's one of the reasons why I kind of stopped. And then also what happened is like they start doing like promoted listings now that they didn't do. So then now there's just like in my opinion, this is just my personal opinion. I as as a buyer, I don't I don't think it's a good buyer's experience. I don't think it's user on eBay, friendly. On eBay you're talking about. No, no, I'm talking about on the on, Facebook marketplace. Oh yeah, it's terrible. Because some it's terrible. Yeah, I, just by the way where the listings are are it doesn't I think eBay is a little bit better when you do the best match, yeah. you know, there, you know, when you click on boxes or whatever, oh, I need an extra large used shirt or like it's yeah. better at it narrowing. Works. It works. On Facebook, yeah, the other one, you get all different results. You get results outside the area. You get results. It, it remembers what you search. And then every time yeah. you go on, you're flooded with the same stuff. And and it yeah, doesn't too even give you like um, the the most recent listed stuff unless you do a special search on your on your desktop, you know. Yeah, and then I'm trying, and then the, like then maybe I, I maybe it was just me I didn't give it enough time, but I'm uploading photos right, and then I was I was using the desktop version, and I couldn't rot I couldn't figure out how to rotate the photo. I'm like, how do they not have? 
a rotate button. And I'm looking all over. And then and then I'm just like, you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to stick on eBay. It's not worth it. You know. Yeah. So I'm really just not. doing the eBay right. They don't have the inf doing... infrastructure on Facebook to to like run run a, a site like eBay. They just don't. And, you know, until they right. start charging people for the service, then they'll never build it, will they? Because it yeah, costs so much that's money exactly... to build something like that. Exactly. And and to manage, to maintain, you know, to do all yeah. that. And they're already, it's, it's like a side. Because what? one of the things on Facebook is it's just not bloody safe, is it? Oh, yeah. I remember you had a situation, you know. Yeah. And, totally. Um, we got done. It, we got done on Facebook. Got done yeah. over. And uh, luckily, my bank gave me the money back. But, you know, it's not well, the first time that we've almost, you know, lost money on there because there's so many scams. I mean, here in the UK, on at the moment, I think the, the worst thing on Facebook is people selling cars on Facebook um, at really, really like competitively cheap prices. And it and it draws you in and you think that it's, it's you know, a great buy. But actually, it's all just a scam. And they're flooded with scams. Yeah, I read, yeah, I read something about that. They, they put prices low, and then you send them a yeah. deposit, but then yeah, it's a lot of rubbish. You know. But almost that's why a lot of people. I at, uh, almost every really? car you look at on Facebook, it's a scam. Yeah, I tell people all the time. Anyway, when people want to try to negotiate, even when people they, they, they message me, whatnot, like they want to negotiate price. I says I don't. If it's something a Facebook item, I says look, I don't negotiate until I see you in person. You know, that's yeah. it. You know, if it's something like a vehicle, I'm talking, you know, obviously if it's a small item or something, but if it's a, something like a car, something where I have to hold it for you, where yeah. I can't, you know, it definitely, uh, you know, so the fate, like I said, Facebook is good just to get your name out there, but it's not for selling the individual items. It's tricky. And until yeah. they become more professional on Facebook, then it's just it's no good. It's just no yeah. good at all. So on your eBay, Rob, um, I, I yes. I've seen your eBay before, and I had another look today to see what kind of stuff you're selling, and um, yeah. it kind of goes along with your Instagram name, which is Bob's Bob's Blazers. Yeah, and you, yeah. you, you've I'll got a lot of blazers on your eBay, haven't you? So is that something you, that you've become a bit of an expert in? Yeah, yeah. Uh... Okay, I just want to. Uh, I, I, I'll, I know how to flip this around. Do this real quick. So I have here. Don't mind the mess here, but you see here. You know. Mm. So I got here, and then this is Rob is showing me a shit ton of blazers and jackets and suit jackets. Yeah, I got tons of stuff here. Um, this is all like, you know, and obviously I haven't figured out some stuff. And then I have, I'll show you real quick down here. You can see this. These are bins that I have of the stuff that's uh, like the t-shirts and sweaters and stuff are in those bins. Okay. You know, so a basic, you know, like I'll have something like that. Like, um, so are you pretty good with you know, blazers and things then? Is that something that you actively look for in the thrift stores? Yeah, and stuff? So that's, that is one of the main things. I mean, of course, like, I'll show you. I'll, I'll pull up right here. Uh, right, give me a second. Like, of course, you know, my, obviously, I love the vintage T-shirts. You know, yeah. like, I have this listed here. Like, this is a Harley Davidson T-shirt. Yeah. You know, this is made in USA. You know, this is a vintage. I don't know if you're familiar with the Grateful Dead, but their stuff is very popular. You know, the tie-dye. Yeah, nice T-shirts. But this stuff like this is is very hard to find mm. because there's so. I'm sure you see the channels. There's a million people trying to get vintage T-shirts. You know. So where do you source so, most of your stock from then? Well, let me, let me finish with the other one. With so when I'm at the thrift store, I'm not looking at the T-shirts unless they just unless they're just coming out. If they're mm. if there's stuff that's been on the, the rack for a while, because we have people that camp out at the thrift stores, which I was one of them, too. So the minute the rack comes out, you know, you know, boom. But stuff like the suits, a lot of people don't a lot of people don't want to sell suits, yeah. you know, and jackets and, and that kind of because a the the sizing is difficult. You have to know the sizing. 
Okay. Yeah. Because everything has everything has been uh, which we'll call it, like, especially when you're dealing, you know, with um, with pre-owned stuff. Um, what was I saying when you're dealing with the vintage sizing can be a nightmare, can't it? It, yeah, but but with the suits, the um, the tricky part is stuff has been altered, so you kind of have to know uh, like what what it fits like. You know what I mean? So if something is like a size uh, 42, but really now it fits like a 40, kind of right. have to know that. And that's why I do like I do the measurements. It took a while, but that's but in my case, that's that's better because hmm. I I have the knowledge. Like, for example, there are some. It's probably the best suits you can buy are are their British suits from, you know, there's a specific area of London, which they call Savile Row. Which, you know, if you can find the, like, like if you just showed it to me, I could tell you exactly what it is. I could tell you which store it came from, which street it's on. Even though I've never been anywhere near right. any of these places, but so I know right a, away. A expert on it on that kind of stuff. So I know now if I yeah, find a ex- blazer jacket, I'm messaging you on Instagram to find out what it is. Oh, you should instantaneously, especially something like that. <laughs> if you see made in, obviously, if you see made in UK, you know, made in USA, made, you know, that's definitely something you know uh i mean but i'm just saying like sometimes a lot of stuff is what they call bespoke which is kind of means like custom made for a person like so but but those are they sell for tremendous money even if they're from the 80s or whatever it is doesn't matter Mm. they could sell for a a ton of money um so but a lot of people they don't even they don't want to go for that stuff and also like i said a lot of it no matter what even if you find a real cherry piece it's still long tail. You know, I don't know, you know, so it's still, I, I have stuff that would take a year or two to sell, you know, it's not, right. I mean, a lot of people, they want to sell like a video game. They want to list it and they want it sold by the next day. But with suits, it doesn't matter even if you drop the price because it just has to be the right guy who right. wants the That's right him. suit. It has to, it has to yeah. have the right fit. Otherwise it, it, it makes no, you know, no matter lowering prices or promoted list, it, it's, doesn't it's not matter, gonna help it, I guess. No, it doesn't matter. You just gotta find that right buyer. So you just gotta sit and wait, I guess. So do you find that your um your like your average sale price is, is quite high? Because I, I would imagine blazer yeah. jackets and stuff can be quite high high value. Yeah, I definitely I definitely have a higher uh from when I started and from when a lot of people, you know. Um I know a lot of people is the their check average is like, I don't know, twenty, twenty five dollars. Mine is probably closer yeah. to fifty. Yeah, that's you know, good. I mean, because obviously I'm selling T-shirts too, but like I said, a but also it takes a long time. I'm sorry. A lot of vintage T-shirts, though, rather than sort of standard T-shirts. Yeah, the, yeah, the but like I said, the vintage T-shirts they become very hard to find. Mm. Uh, like I said, you go to the thrift store, and there'll be half a dozen guys there just waiting. You know, I used to have a relationship with one lady where. Oh yeah, it's kind of, I I don't know if I met I don't know if I told like that's not that kind of I would have her. <laughs> well, it wasn't that kind of relationship. <laughs> so she she would text me when she's about to bring out the the new merchandise. Okay, and then in return, I would help her put the stuff back on the shelves for her and on the racks. All right, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So we had a little relationship going. Say, look, I'll help you. Do your you work, me. do your job, and then you help me, you know. And then, uh, like everything else, then there's a lot more guys there showing up, and then I already have a lot of stuff, you know. So I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm not gonna run there early in the morning, yeah. To, uh, you know, to get stuff, you know, because it's already, uh, you know, there's like I said, there's a lot of guys there, and they're and they're going for those t-shirts. Yeah. You know, Chris Tyler on YouTube has got a question for you, Rob. Uh, have you yeah. ever found anything interesting in a suit pocket? Well, yeah, about I don't know, three, four months ago, I found a wad of cash, How and much? uh, yeah, about 400 bucks. Whoa, no way! Yeah, I was sweating and I was like, I was like, all right, you know, I gotta go check out, you know, because that's always because. Always like one of the first things I do when you when you you, know, you open it up, you have to inspect to see if there's any flaws. When you open it up, you look at the lining, you know, and then you look inside to see what the material, what it's made out of, you know, you you know, you see. 
So then I could feel right away. I could, I could just put my hand over it and I could feel that bulge. And there was like a wad of cash. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to the cash register right now. Cause it was just in, on the inside pocket. I'm like, I'm just going to go to the cash register right now. I'm not going to stay in the store longer in case one of the employees forgot to look or so, whatever. I don't know. Whatever it is. I went right to the register. I bought the suit, whatever it was, paid 20, 25 bucks for the suit. And then when I went to the car, I had no idea how much was in there, you yeah. know, because I was, I, I wasn't about to take it out and then start count. You know, I just yeah, yeah. felt you it. Just and I know, though. You, you must have known. Even if it was dollar bills, you know, it's going to be, you know, worth you picking it up. Yeah. So that's what happened. So I just felt it. So I was like, well, I was going to buy the suit anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, it wasn't like I wasn't going to buy the suit. Nice. Yeah. I, I was going to buy it anyway. It was like 25 um, bucks. Is, so here's a question for you then. Um, so is um, a thrift stores the main places that you buy your stock or have you got like wholesale contacts and stuff like that yeah well that's the yeah that's actually um uh i would say it's pretty evenly distributed maybe a little bit more on thrift stores but i uh the wholesaling meaning like not just random people from online you know no, like a oh I'm a, I'm a mail order company yeah like some wholesalers and you know cor- like a like we, like I, I mentioned it I think I mentioned this to you too uh, before uh, I mean if there's anybody listening especially if you're in the UK there is a tremendous financial opportunity if you're willing to work hard um, and you really want to uh, make money there's nobody doing everybody I talk to there's nobody that does estate sales nobody people does what everyone Sorry. that says well you know and they don't do estate sales oh estate sales yeah. Yeah, I'll, so that's yeah, who my people are who I'm buying a lot of stuff from. Because remember, when when you, items are at the they're in the house first before they get to the thrift. The thr- like the thrift store, that there's already been like five hands that have touched the merchandise before you, they yeah. even get to the thrift store. Right. So, like I have one woman in particular. I don't know if you ever heard me talk, but her name is Leslie, um, and she has the estate sale company. And I kind of almost do the same thing with her once in a while. So people who either they pass away and, and you know, the people who inherit the the, the estate uh, or a lot of people here downsize. I'm sure people in UK do the same thing. You know, maybe they retire mm. and then they go to Spain or something or they go to, yeah. you know, there's other. We have, or we whatever have house clearances here, which is probably the same thing, like a house clearance. Yeah, but. I, they don't let people in. As far as I've been told, they don't. They, yeah, I've, they don't. I've been to a couple. I've been to a couple where oh, okay. somebody's somebody's. Well, I've been to a couple where someone's died, and the family have basically said everything in the house is for sale. And you yeah, can just wander well, that, around. Yeah. But it just seemed like other people I've spoken to. There's just not that many. There isn't many. Like there isn't. Yeah. So I'm just saying, like. Like, for example, there's a uh, well, let me finish with this other woman, Leslie, uh, real quick. Yeah, go is on. that, you know, she, she'll go into the house. You know, she has a you know, she knows a lot about jewelry, this, that, and everything. And I'll I'll help her set up for the sale that she's about to do. And then she'll set up for the sale. I'll help her up. I'll bring racks and set up clothing. But then she'll let me get first pick of the clothing in in lieu of, you know, obviously I'm not getting paid. I'm, I'm buying it from her, but I'm able to go in. And then look through items first, because that's the whole key: is that you want to get in there first. You want to get in there early. You know, yeah. You want to get there when the when the stuff first comes out. That's what I tell a lot of people. You know, I notice that, you know, uh, not just UK. I'm not just picking on UK. You you know, American YouTube the same thing. Like the good items, they're never. You're never gonna find the great items just sitting there on the rack. They they're it's always there, because there's a million guys looking for stuff. You know, <clears throat> but like I said, so she'll call me up ahead of time or a lot of times, let's say the stuff didn't sell at the sale. And and it's a lot different than like a thrift store. A thrift store can let a, a, a jacket sit there for a month or whatever. It doesn't matter. You know, they just oh, yeah. let it sit. But these sales, these estate sales, more often than not, the, the home is already sold. So mm. they have a new person coming in to take over the house. So they have to get the place cleared out. Right. So there's a lot of pressure on them. So like, you know, and when these companies, when you keep buying from them, 
off over and over and over again, they'll call you ahead of time and they'll say, look, yeah. Rob, I got something for you because mm -hmm. she like one time she called me up. She's like, I need you to make it up to an area that's near the Bronx, but a wealthy area, you know, um, not where the stadium. Is. So she was like, look, I, I need you to get here in a half an hour. So I whatever I, I had a sandwich in my mouth, I put the sandwich, I wrapped it up and I just <laughs> I got in the car because. That's how it is. It's like, well, when they're, the trucks are outside, you always want to get it just before, you know, because maybe they're going to donate the rest of the stuff. Maybe they're going to whatever. But then you go there, especially like when she deals with only, you know, high end areas, you know. Yeah. It so that's always serious, my thing. I look Rob, for, you, for you to put your sandwich down and go. I mean, that must be, you know, oh, that yeah. must be serious. That. And, and I joke with her. I'm like, I said, you know, I joke. I flirt with her a little bit, you know. And I says, I says, Leslie, you're the only woman that I'll wake up that if I see the phone ringing and it's before seven, a, eight a.m. Otherwise, I'm not. If I if the phone wakes me up, I'll just, you know, hit the button and you know go back to sleep. But because you know I'm not a morning guy, I'm from the restaurant business. But when right. she calls me up, if she has something, if I see her phone and it's eight o'clock in the morning, you, I know it's something you're good. Have to get up. Yeah, you oh, get up. I get up. She's the, oh, <laughs> the only one I'm getting up. To. <clears throat> you know that's it in the uk but there's a lot like, of opportunity in the uk estate sales um they don't happen that often but they do get advertised a lot on like facebook and stuff but what tends to happen is that companies come in and clear the house out for for you know they'll just come in and take everything like one company Yeah, but aren't they charging then... to take the stuff away I don't know if they charge to take it. They may they may charge something, or they may take it for free in exchange for keeping the stuff or for clearing the house. Um, yeah. and, and then you see those guys, like we call them the house clearance guys, and then then you see yeah. them at the boot sales, like, yep. and you you see they'll just get boxes full of stuff out of someone's house and plonk it on the floor, and you just root through it. So yeah, yep. I, I think it, I think most estate sales tend to go that way, you know. Yeah, we have that too. We have guys, a guy called Undercutters. Uh, they're called Undercutters Junk Removal. You know, because because they're because yeah. what they're doing is they're taking all this, they're taking all the stuff to the flea market. You know, as you you know, boot sale. Okay, so all right, we've got a question from Andrew uh, on YouTube, okay. uh, Monumental UK, who says, um, "Who are your reselling inspirations?" Bearing in mind he's banned from drinking with Andrew, if he doesn't okay. say Andrew. Oh yes, definitely. Andrew is definitely an inspiration. He's an inspiration in different ways, but who do not you like reselling. Watching most on YouTube, you know, who do you watch a lot of resellers on YouTube? Do you, who do you like? Uh, I I th one of the original people that I started watching, who I I got a lot of knowledge out of. Um, his name is Peter. Uh, he he's he goes by the name of the Craigslist Hunter, which is kind of oh, outdated because yeah. people really don't use Craigslist anymore. But you familiar with him? Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a American, but you know he's a Polish naturalized citizen. You know, he lives uh, in a sh near Chicago, which is you know which is a large Polish community. Uh, he moved, I guess, he moved here twenty thirty years ago, and uh, you know, you know. But a lot of things, a lot of, um, for example, he's very good at explaining how much time it takes to do things, how to do it right. Uh, just very thing in detail. Like if, if you need a general knowledge of reselling, he's definitely out of course. And also how to negotiate with people. He's very good at negotiating. And okay. also I would, you know, just little things like letting merchandise come to you. You know, like I said, like with this other woman, Leslie. You know, have her calling me. It's easier when the stuff comes to you rather than you running out and chasing stuff. Good you know point. what I mean? When you're getting the call, that's, you know, not easy, always not easy want to, to get a contact like, like that, though, is it? It's not easy. But you, but you, but you, but also what I want to say is you have to plant the seeds. Like, for example, mm -hmm. if you, if you were saying, I want to get in that house clearance business to estate sales, excuse me, you have to become friends with the realtors. I don't know. Do when people sell homes, do most people do for sale by owner, or they, or they, or they use a realtor? The well, in the UK, there are estate agents, but yeah, most people use an estate agent. A re, yeah, we call it a realtor. There's somebody yeah, who just thing. yeah, 
So to make friends, you want to make good friends with those realtors because those people, they're the ones trying to get that deal done. Mm. And they need somebody right away to get that stuff out because, right. they, you know, they need, you know, they always need people, you, you know, and then, and then when you're Johnny on the spot, oh, oh, I, I got to get this house, you know, uh, because sometimes the house has a ton of stuff and they got to get the stuff out quick because they can't even show the house if there's too much stuff. So when you're Johnny on the spot and they call you at 7 a.m., you say, I'll be right there, you know. You know, I'll I'll be I'll be there right away. Surely though, that's, that's most the, of the idea. Time, most of the time, they won't want somebody coming in just cherry picking stuff. They want someone to come in and take the bloody lot. Well, yeah, of course, but but I'm just saying, just in a general sense, yeah. those are people. But the point, like you foster those relationships. Yeah. You know, and that's why a lot of times I bought, I bought lots from people that I was like, look, I'm only going and buying the lot, which is kind of a bad habit to buy too much stuff. But I bought stuff where I'm just like, you know what? I'm buying it because I want to keep that relationship. Because guess what? If you call and say, oh, you know what? I have a lot of stuff already. They're calling the next guy. And then that next guy is yeah. going to become their new guy. Their new guy. And, and no, you I can't totally have that. that. You, so I'm like, I get that. I'm like, I'll be right there. Yeah. No, that's good. Let's talk about um, like, um, like the city, like New York City, like Manhattan and that. Okay. So... Do you, you you mentioned before that you do occasionally go go in. Do, how do you go about sort of thrifting or or you know buying to resell in the city? Well, yeah, when I say when I go to thrift, well, I'm talking more about Queens and Brooklyn right. that are the outer boroughs. Just on in the Manhattan, outer boroughs. Correct. Like for example, the uh, your Goodwill bins, which you have been to, right? I mean, yeah. you were in, in Florida. I don't like it. Yeah, I know. Well, oh, rub, I, yeah, but yes, but guess what? Especially the the more uh what do you call it? Dodgy? Is that the term mm. that you guys use? Dodgy, yeah. The do well, depending on what context well, you're gonna use it in. Yeah, well the dodgier if you call a neighborhood or a place dodgy, you yeah, know it's yeah, sketchy. Uh, sketchy. So yeah. you but there's a risk reward. If you go into places that are sketchier, there's more reward, you know, because other people don't want to go. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Like I go to one of the, there's a place, like I said, also outside of Manhattan Island, but it's still New York city, a very bustling area, very busy. Uh, there's, there's some, uh, Spanish areas. Okay. Hispanic. A lot of mm. people from, you know, South of the border we call it, you know? Yeah. And I, I have experience speaking Spanish because when I work, when you work in the restaurant business, most of the workers, they speak Spanish. Yeah. You know? They come from, you know, south south of the border. So I, I, I'm used to communicating with them. And I know their culture and I know how to speak with them and communicate with them. That a lot of people, you know, a lot of like, uh, you know, white Americans don't wouldn't know how to communicate with them. You know, but I can start talking to them and, and then they don't like, for example, they're not going to know rock T-shirts. They're not going to know if I showed them a picture of the Rolling Stones, they wouldn't know. You know, like I got one, uh, I don't, I wish I had the picture of it, but I, I got one uh, Nirvana. It had a big uh, Kurt Cobain t-shirt, right? On, with a big face on it, you yeah. know? And I got like 200, I got like 200. It's probably worth more now, but I got like five years ago. And I bought it from a woman in a small, like a small thrift store, Spanish speaking woman. Paid like two bucks because she's not going to know. She, if, she she had a, if, if she had, if she can't make that generalization, she, has no, she might know. She uh, might, she might love a bit of you know Kurt Cobain or whatever. Uh, no, uh, I would bet my life on it. Okay. Um, so, so, but th that's what I'm saying. But a lot of people, they're not going to go into those places because if they don't yeah. speak the language and they don't know how, you know, and this play, and it's funny because we, I was just, I was just having the same conversation with another guy who, that I know from the area. He goes to places that are super sketchy where, you know, it's, you know, a lot, a way worse than the place. Like, I'm not I'm just going to places where people really don't speak English. He's going to places where it's dangerous, where it's actual right. you're, you're putting your life in danger. You know what I mean? The thing is, though, Rob, in Brooklyn, right, you, you say that the sketchy areas are good places to go because people don't know what, you know, what they've got in, on yeah. the shelves. But on the, also on the flip side. The sketchy areas, like say the poorer areas, does it okay. does it not just have 
the clothing and and items that are no, not these guys quality. Listen, my friend just sent me this picture, and it, and I I just sent. I don't know if Scott is still in here. I showed him. This guy was like, uh, he he showed me the table, right? My friend who went to this place in in Brooklyn, and there's like, uh, World War Two memorabilia, which is probably banned on eBay. Okay, like stuff that you're like, how do these people have passports? Mm. from guys from the third reich okay right. like yeah. how would they have this right and then another guy had you know what tiffany is i don't know if they have stores in london too yeah but top, there's top a brand, they, yeah. they have in, 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 yeah like they have in new york it's a famous brand the guy's looking at tiffany silverware how does but that the end up there, in even... in in a thrift store i'm in, telling you in the sketchy areas listen I told you, even the place where I was, in the in the area which is not really sketchy, but it's just mm. like I said, it's just a it's just a migrant area. But it's not like I'm not afraid to park my car there. It's not like a you know I'm not you know it's not dangerous per se. Yeah. <clears throat> but I got game worn jerseys, basketball you know NBA basketball players with game worn jerseys. Nice. You know, ha- like you said, you're like, how do they end up over there? You know yeah. what I mean? There's a lot of stuff like that. I was told you I found some men's suits custom made stuff from italy but like it's good because they don't they're not going to know those names like yeah i mean everybody knows gucci and burberry and polo like you know yeah but there's a lot of there's a lot of other brands that people they're just not going to know mm. you know they're just it's just it's just they're just rare stuff and they're not but like i said the stuff he's showing me rare antiques and stuff like that and i mean you know places that there's you know graffiti on the walls and there's you know, you know, like I said, I, I'm like, it's even a little sketchy for me. And mm. you know what I mean? Because it's because, you know, if you make the wrong turn, it, you're really in the dangerous part, you know. <clears throat> but this guy, I mean, he was in the war in Iraq and, you know, people shooting at you, you know, so like, he, you know, yeah. he, he's OK. He's, he's fine to go he's there. Right you know what I mean? He's OK with it. Yeah. He knows how to use weapons, you know. So, um, but like I said, but you have to do that sometimes because like when we go to, like, we have this one big thrift store, it's called Savers. I don't know if you, did you see yep. that down in Florida? I, know it. I, okay. I didn't see any yeah, in Florida, so, but I know, I know of it. So, but that, that's like a busy thrift store, whatever it is. It's like a corporate thrift store. They have chain, you know, many locations. So like a lot of people just camp out there. They just, that's like kind of their home base. You know what I mean? And then, you know, but like I said, there might be a dozen people there that are uh, that are looking for stuff. So yeah. you know what? So, but a lot, a lot of people of don't want to go to the sketchy. So of competition much competition, re- reselling. Yeah, and so let's I know, about... and I and Chris, I thought the same thing well, you did. You're like, how do places if it's a poor area, how do they end up? But it, it, it just it's, does. It's just it just seems to end up there because. They're getting stuff from storage lockers. They're getting stuff from the, mm. I, who knows where these people are getting this stuff. It's it, it's it's shocking. It's not just the poor people's stuff. But anyway, so you want to ask another question? Yeah, uh, we'll move on to something different. Um, so sure. Um, tell us about um where you are. Right, I'm mean, assuming you're well. You are. You show me. You're in your stock your stock area, your office area. So what what yeah, kind this... of um business premises are you in? Where where you're operating from? Yes. So upstairs from me, where we are here, up, upstairs is a thrift store. It's a mom and pop thrift store, though. Okay. What does that, what does it's, that mean? Uh, well, we, it's not corporate. It's not savers. It's not a, is, a chain. Is you know, it, it's, it's, is a, it, it's just um, like, is it a prof, profit making um, thrift store it or is, is it profit. parity? It's profit making. Yeah. And, uh, but people still drop off stuff because they just don't even want to bring it to other. They're just like, they just leave stuff. There's a lot of people you would be, it's the same thing. Like you say, where do people get this stuff? People will just drop stuff off because they feel it's better for the community anyway, because instead of throwing it in the garbage, somebody from the community can get it, you know, uh, a pair of jeans for $3. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, 
I mean, so it's not necessarily, but because you know what? A lot of these charities anyway, like uh, they call it like the goodwill. Mm. When you when you actually look at their bottom line. Mm, I know. I know what you're going to say. I've, I've heard it before. You know, the big yeah, buses so it's, are in mega books, aren't they? Yeah. They have CEOs. They have presidents. Yeah. They have this. They have executives oh, that they're making you know, to me I, i'm a, i'll happily buy from you know a thrift store that's a, that's just a family business uh, you know as well as charities it doesn't matter to me you know probably get better deals to be fair yeah so she obviously doesn't get you know huge stuff because she's not a lot of these other bigger places they send trucks out to pick up stuff so they get tons of stuff she just yeah. gets just from like you said just from this community people yeah. they just drop stuff off so, um, but so you're in the I used to buy then. from her. Correct. So I used to buy from her once in a while. You know, I would stop here. I mean, I, I live five minutes away in, you know, car. So I would stop once in a while here. And then, uh, she showed, she was using this room as like a storage room for her stuff, but yeah. she just had a, half of it was some boxes and this and that, you know, it was, it wasn't even that much stock. So I told her, I says, look, I'll, I'll rent it from you. And this was probably uh, this was before COVID. So it was probably maybe right. a year or so before COVID. So I decided, you know, so um, so I rent a store from her. And it's a good deal. It's a good deal for both ends. I'm getting a very fair price. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, she needs somebody. She can't just rent it to anybody because I have to go. I have keys for the store. I have to go through the store. Oh, okay. through all the. She's got you know, trust so she can. She? exactly like when i see like i'll see merchandise outside and will start to rain and i'll bring the stuff in that people leave you know from outside that donate whatever yeah. it is you know what i mean uh, so like i said she, she's got to find somebody honest and responsible to make sure to remember to lock the doors you know to check you know what i mean i gotta yeah. so it, it, it works out better and she's a nice lady you know we get along well people always say oh you're buying from stuff her. From her? like yeah I, I really do once in a while but mm. she really doesn't have like, you know, she doesn't really get like the stuff that I'm buying. Yeah. You know, but occasionally and she sells some something that's worth picking up occasionally. And she sells a little stuff for her. You know, if there's something that's really good, she's going to sell it online herself. You know what I mean? It's not like it's a yeah. big corporation. You know, she just, you know, she sees something that comes in, she's going to list it and sell it. But we have a very good relationship, you know, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, so oh, I was going to talk to you. We we brief when when we was in New York, we went to one of the outlet malls and we we got some great bargains. Um, the one at I've written it down because I didn't want to forget Woodbury. Woodbury so, Commons is that where you went? I don't know. Woodbury Outlet is where yeah. we went. And it's got like Calvin yeah, Klein and places like that. Yeah, that's north. Yeah, well, that's north of the city. That's right. out, that's out. Yeah, that that's north of the city. That's not like, like, the river. The Hudson River goes like this way, and okay. then the island, Long Island, goes this way. Right. And then this is up there, and I'm I'm out here. Okay. You know, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm out on the that it, it is, it's kind of tricky because I'm we're kind, we're we're on an island. We're stuck. You know what I mean? We can't really. It's hard to get to the mainland yeah. USA, but it doesn't matter because we're so populated here that there's enough stuff yeah. here. You know, we have so many people living here. That you ever, it's easy um, enough to... Do you ever source from like the outlets or do you ever source brand new yeah. stuff rather than second hand? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do have. I was going to show you. Uh, I can't find it now, but we do have like, um, I know you guys call it TK Max, mm. but it's TJ Max here yeah. and Marshalls. So and, and I will, Ross. like, I. That's another one, Ross. Ross, I ha we only have a couple of Ross stores here. I really haven't bought anything from Ross in my region in, in, in Long Island. We don't even have Ross. We have another one called Burlington. But um but we have a lot of Marshalls and TJ Maxx, but they really only only like I I did buy a lot of stuff. It's right after Christmas they put a lot of stuff on, on clearance. Mm. But in, in usual times I usually don't go in there because yeah. they just don't um you know, they just don't I might I might have it here. Look here. I have tickets here just as you're speaking here. You see, like this. Can yes. you read that here? It says Marshall. So what they yeah. do is, you could see all these this tick sticker. Exactly the same. Uh, exactly stuff. the same as what happens here at TK Maxx. Yeah. So now it says, like this. This is like the third sticker at yeah. fifty nine dollars. 
So, but during the regular year, they usually don't drop that much. They usually, you know, people buy it. They don't usually have that much left on clearance. So, mm-hmm. but stuff like that. But, uh, but even in here, like this is a tag from another thrift store. Here you go. Yeah. Sold as is. That's from a, another uh, corporate, kind of, kind of corporate thrift store chain. Mm. But, um, you know, just different here. So this one here is not yellow, but it's 59. It was, you know, compared 360, they were selling for 170, and now it was 60. You know what I mean? You, yeah. you have to they have these. Have to um, they have these big like RRPs, don't they? On on the tags, it's like RRP 399, and then we're selling it in in the UK, TK Maxx for 99 pound, yeah. and then it'll have a sale ticket yeah. on it for 49 pound. You know. That's how it is. Yeah, yeah, but but then again, you have to remember this too. That's another thing too is that when they're doing that at your TJ Maxx, TK Maxx, whatever it is, yeah. you got to be very careful. Make sure to do your homework because mm. there's, they're doing that at those stores all over the country. Yeah. So now a lot of people say, "Oh, oh yeah. wow, it's not it's on clearance." But sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's just like if, if there's just too many of them, even if the price yeah. is great, eBay is flooded with them. There's there's nothing you can do about it. What are you going to do? Yeah, you know, it's the, yeah, you're totally. not going to sell them because there's just too many. So you kind of have to like, it's the waiting game. You have to leave yourself a lot of room. You know, oh totally, yeah, yeah, it is difficult. But uh, Dave on uh, YouTube here, Dave ABL Reselling, has got a really good comment, and and he says, I wonder if a thrift store would work in the UK. Um, you know, like a, an independent thrift store rather than a charity. They they do have them. I mean, Dave, you must have seen some, but I've seen some like there, there is there's a few here in Rill um, where we live um, that are just independent like thrift stores and um, they sell secondhand mm. stuff. And I'd love to I think if I was ever going to have like a shop premises, I would have like a unit that would be like a thrift store just full of all different stuff. But it would be obviously that's be thing. my business rather than a charity. See, because that's another thing. Well, what Savers does, the, what we were just talking about, they're not a charity. You know that, right? Yeah. So what they do, you know that? Okay. Yeah. So, but what they, oh, you, so in case anybody who, you know, you're curious how Savers works, they buy from the charities. So what happens is they have way stations in the back of the store. So they they have different organizations. Like they have one that's called Big Brothers, Big Sisters. I don't even know what the heck they do, but they buy from though. But though this company, Big Brothers Big Sisters, they have trucks that go around and people, you know, they pick up the donations, whatever it is. And uh, what Savers will do, they they buy their merchandise for about twenty five cents a pound. Okay, and I know it sounds weird. Twenty five cents a pound. I know you guys use kilo, whatever. I don't know, whatever you use. It's um, next to nothing, isn't it? You, but you, but you know, but obviously, you know, obviously, you know what I'm talking about. You know, twenty five cents a. Uh, you know, a pound is a half a kilo, you know, for anybody who's, or just about, you know, and 25 cents is not like, it's nothing. So it's, they're buying. Yeah. 20 P. Yeah. Yeah. 20 P. So, so for a half a kilo of merchandise, it's which ridiculous. is not, you know, yeah, but that's what they're doing, but they're buying, of yes. course, you know, tonnage, you know what I mean? They're yeah. buying thousands of pounds about, you know, so. But there, but that's what they do. Or, or if you like, they they do on their overhead speaker. When you're in the store, they're like, "Oh, are you having a fundraiser for an organization? Please talk to the manager, and you know we can buy. You know they'll buy it from you if you're doing some yeah. type of fundraiser. Hmm. You know whatever it is they pay twenty, like I said, twenty to thirty cents for uh, for the poundage. You know, but that's not a bad idea. You know, but huh. that's tough. Um, question for you then. Um, you um, you sometimes message me when you find football or soccer shirts, as you call them out there. Yes. Um, and you you seem to find loads of soccer shirts, like UK and yes. obviously around the world soccer shirts. Probably yes. more than I even see at the local boot sales here in the UK. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So um, how come you seem to get all these football soccer shirts? It's mad how many you get. Like I yeah, like I said, you know, I find. Is this stuff again? Is this and, the, uh, the 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 Hispanic sort of? They're not sure about what they are, or no? And this one, I like. This is the one. I think I sent you a picture. I wasn't sure if it was authentic because I know a lot of times mm. these Adidas ones are faked. But then yeah, I sent it to another guy because it had. A, I'll show you the picture. But this one here, especially, they do better if they have a name on the back. 
Oh yeah. You know, yeah. they, they do much better. And this was the one I told you where that lady used to let me, um, it has, it still has the little pinhole through it. Uh, the lady where I used to help her put her merchandise away. And then yeah. she would let me get in early. This is, I got, so I only paid, uh, dollar 99 so what oh, you, know, you know one one pound 50 or whatever you know so Not for this time. jersey you know it's just you know like i said you know you could find that stuff i mean that's like that's not a, a great one I mean, it's a cheaper jersey you know but but stuff like that um you know it, it, it th those come out all day long you know what i mean and, and yeah. she only charged me the t-shirt the price and then here i just found like this one here i thought this was Can't That's quite... cool, right? Yeah. Is it Ralph Lauren? Can't quite see it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's nice. It has yeah. The, uh... yeah, I can see it. It has the crest. Yeah. Nice. You know, the, the in England. They you always know. do well. The uh, ones that have got the countries and cities on them always do well with the Ralph Lauren. Yeah. Exactly. So that, that was a flea market find. Like I said, one of the ladies from the flea market you know, and like I said, sometimes she was like, oh, I'm going to get some stuff on Monday night at 6 p.m. Come meet me at this other location. You know, she has her suppliers that she gets stuff from. Oh, look who it is. Picking for a living. Picking for a living That's... on YouTube here says soccer is very popular in New York because we have a lot of immigrant communities here. Also, you have two soccer teams, uh, which I was going to talk about very quickly. Um, New York City FC, which is the team that I like to follow yeah. in the US because they are connected yeah. to Manchester City, who is my team. Yeah. And you got the Red Bulls as well. So do you follow the soccer at all? Well, Red Bulls are not here. Red Bulls are in New they're Jersey. They're in, but I... they're, they're kind of New York. No, Red they're Bulls. in New Jersey. No, but oh. I'm saying, but they, no, they're in New Jersey. I, I actually, I went to the stadium one time. It was a terrible experience because hmm. they're logistically, the, the, way, the, 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 the place where they put the stadium logistically, with the with the transportation is, is a disaster. I I didn't go there to see them. I went there to see Bayern Munich. Um, oh, okay. I had a like friend. A I had a friend day. of mine who's. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I I went the year the year they had the World Cup that they. Uh, well, all the Germans were not there. They were all still playing in the cup, um, and they uh, they were still playing. But I got to see a few of the guys that were still on the team. Like um, yeah. th this is the first year Robert Lewandowski was on the team. Right. And um, but it was a, it was they played a team called Shivers de Guadalajara. Right. And uh, that was it was a I mean, the very intense fans, you know, it was a, you know, but like I don't even watch it anymore because I don't have that. My friend, you know, because after COVID, we got different work and we're doing different jobs and doing this. We're not working in the restaurant anymore. So it's kind of like now because soccer is not on football. It's not on. I mean, it is on TV. You can get. If you have the right channels, they made it also very. In the, I'm sure they did the same thing in the UK. In the last five years or so, everything is different with different apps and different this and different that. It used to be a lot easier, like on our regular cable television channels, to get yeah. games to like. The, basically, I mean, mostly we would just watch a Champions League because the yeah, Champions yeah. League is on in the afternoon. You know, because obviously they're not going to wake up and watch morning games. You yeah, know, but true. um, only hardcore fans are going to do that. But um. We'd watch a lot of Champions League, you know, uh, those games, you know, because my friend, we'd go to different bars and stuff. We'd go to the Irish bars because the Irish like soccer. So they yeah. would usually make sure to have, they would make sure to have those they special have channels. On, don't they? Yeah, they have the sport on. Yeah. I, so believe, then, watch... I believe New York City, though, New York City FC, someone said to me that they're classed more as New York than the Red Bulls because they are, they are actually closer to New York. Is that right? Well, they're in New York. They play, like I said, the yeah. Bronx, like, you know, the Bronx, the New York City has the five boroughs. You know, they have Bronx, yeah. Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, Staten Island. They, so they play, as far as I know, they're still playing at Yankee Stadium. I don't know if they're changing. They are. I know they they are yeah, they're, they're having a new stadium built, but I think it's directly next door to the Yankee Stadium. That's oh, okay. Stadium yeah. So, be. yeah, that's, so that's in the Bronx. That's New York City proper. The, hmm. the Red Bulls, play in a place called Harrison, New Jersey. They play on the other side of the river. And right. it's uh it you know, it's like an hour away from it. it it's it's not um you know it's they they a lot of stuff gets built here. It's not it it's just look, it's corruption. I'll be I'll cut the you know there's 
uh, somebody wants something built somewhere and somebody does somebody a favor. And because you know what it is, they always want to show like, oh, look, we're creating new jobs and creating this and creating that. But it's just somebody who's, you know, they'll say, oh, I'll let you build whatever you want. You don't need permits or anything. Yeah, just build it, you know. But, uh, but like on regular TV, I wouldn't even know how to find any of these games on television, mm. to be honest. You know, this, like I said, it, it, you know, more people, if you, if I walked around here, it's more likely I would find somebody with a Ronaldo jersey or a Messi jersey Probably, and somebody yeah. from. Probably. You, nobody's following the New York. Well, team, Messi you know? now. Messi is is uh, Miami, so he's yeah. Well, they the were US. a lot of people. When I go to the flea market, you'll see tons of those fake, those pink jerseys that they wear. Mm, yeah. You know, the Miami team, whatever. You know, I'm sure you know yeah. that color, that pink or whatever it is. That you'll see those all over the place. You know, people yeah. are wearing those. Uh, you know, and but obviously, I'm not picking them up because I know they're. I mean, they're all fakes. There's so many fakes. They're too new. It's- Really so hard, it's really hard, you know, to get around them. There's a lot of fakes. Right, we're coming to the end, Rob. And you know how us Brits like to keep to our timings. Um, Punctual. I've got three questions, though. I've got three questions before we finish. Uh, the first sure. question Shoot. for you is, um, what is your best or most unusual find? Yeah, uh, I probably think, which I showed you the picture, the um, I'll put, I'll put I found it on the screen for those watching. Okay, right there. That is not just any ordinary basketball jersey. That's a New York Knicks. That's the famous team that they that plays in Times Square, in Ooh. you know in New York City at right the Madison enough. Square Garden, the world's most famous arena. And um, that he was a player, not a very popular. I mean, he was a decent player, but this is a game worn jersey. Oh, nice! And you could see, you'll see on there uh, on the one tag, it will say uh, game issue. And um, that's what that means. And you could tell right away, like, I found that at one of those small thrift stores. Like I said, from that lady I bought the Kurt Cobain t-shirt from. Yeah. That she's not, she wouldn't know that this is a game war. Like, she just would have no idea. Um, but, of course, I got very lucky I found that. And you could see also body length. You know, basketball players are always very tall. So, mm-hmm. they're very, you know, they're, they're very long jersey. Um, but that one, I sold it. I undersold it. But. I, I think I want to get about I got about six hundred dollars for it. Ooh, how much did you pay for it? <clears throat> I could have got a few bucks. I mean, she didn't like I said she it wasn't you got you know she had already no paid a, a couple of dollars. Oh yeah, she, but like I said, and if this this is you know in one of those communities I bought it from, um, you know she's not gonna know what that is and uh, you know and and it also it was a lot of work finding it because it's one of those places. Where I gotta take a pic, you'll you'll get a kick out of this because your stores I are are organized with shell. Right? This is just one. She has just giant piles of clothing, and you have to dig through the piles of clothing. Right. Like the pile is higher than my head. So, but you you have to like dig, and then hopefully you can't pull something in the bottom. There'll be an avalanche all over the place. <laughs> but I had I. But the thing is, the game worn stuff. It's the same thing with the football, soccer. You know, the their jerseys are not the same as no, the ones not. that you're getting. You, no. And when you more, put your hand technical. on it, when you, more, and the thing more. is when you put your hand, you know, right away yeah. that it's the real one. Like, can tell. it's just like, you could tell. So when I felt it, I was like, oh my God. And then I just paid for it right away. Same thing. And then I took off and I was like, wow, I, I knew right away what I had. And, uh, just like I said, you can look this. And, and also when you flip it up inside out, the stitching is meticulous. Mm. You know what I mean? It's perfect. There's no like. It's not like machine yeah. stitched where it's like, uh, you know, it's crooked and, you know, whatever. But that That's was a, a great nice find. find that, though. That's a really nice find for a couple of dollars. Yeah. You can't I mean, argue with that, can you? Yeah. yeah right. Next much. question for you, Rob, is um, have you got a goal for yourself for this year, for this coming year? Yeah, this year, I definitely want to expand on another platform. I always go back and forth all the time with Etsy or with Poshmark mm-hmm. or whatever it is, or even I know people doing whatnot. I, I, I do, I, I want to dip my toes in the water and try to do some different, you know, I, I keep saying it because I'll talk to one guy and I'll say, Oh, how are you doing on Etsy? And they'll say, Oh, Etsy is good. Then the next guy's like, Oh, you know, just focus yeah. on eBay. Yeah. You know? So I'm, that's why I, like, I'm really considering trying to spread out because also, you know what it is too? 
I also get scared, like everybody else. Like, um, a lot of people they have their account shut down yep. on eBay for no oh. reason, or or you know, I know uh, Nick and Andrea they went through some kind of issues with their account. You know, uh, you could you could you know even if your account doesn't get shut down, you could lose it for a couple of weeks while they sort a problem out. You know. Yeah, so th that's another thing that gets me concerned is that it's like, well, yeah. I have all this stuff and then I can't sell it or they, they can't send me the money or some. So it's like I want it eat just as a backup, you know, and even also, if it's not. But I have to think if you think about it, like um, when you're just on one platform, um, you're you're subjected to the ups and downs of that platform. So one day is yeah. great. The next day is shit. But yeah. when you've got two platforms, when one's down, the other one might be up. So you yep. can kind of help sort of flatten the flatten the roller coaster a little bit, yep. you know. Sure, absolutely. So um, yeah, so you you're hoping to? I'm gonna I'm gonna check in with you in a few months and see which platform you've yep. you've gone into. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. test. Or to get or to break my chops and say you go to get it. You told yeah. this is your New Year's resolution. Kick your ass. Um. Right. Okay. Third, third question for you, Rob, is um, do you have um, any tips or words of wisdom for your fellow resellers out here? Yeah, I'll, I'll just go back to the two things that, that, I, that I'm trying to say. A, make those relationships, you know, those people who do those clearance or whatever it is, you know, um, definitely do that. You know, the relationships are so much better than trying to chase. And go to, don't be afraid, go to some areas like, be like, oh, like, like, I, like, I, like you thought, and I thought too, you know, like, oh, what kind of good stuff are they going to have in those dodgy Poor areas? Area. But so, yeah. yeah, you know, sometimes you say like, oh, they're not going to have anything there, but a lot of times they do have stuff, you know, mm. especially like if it's, you know, like I said, if it's sketchy or if it's people who you don't really know them, no one's going to go there. They have stuff there. And they just don't, a lot of times people, they don't know the, that other woman is not going to know that Kurt Cobain t-shirt, but it's in a pile of, t if she's getting stuff from donations, you know, she's not going to know. She's just going to say, here, $2, $2. Okay, here's $2, you know, Fair that's enough. why that, don't be afraid. Go to, because I, I know, like I said, the one thing that kind of always gets me when I see a lot of people, especially like I said, the UK, they'll go into these well manicured thrift stores or, you know, charity shops or whatever you call them. You know, the carpet is freshly, uh, you know, uh, vacuumed and the racks are perfect. And it's like, you know what? When the store is so organized, I'm going to have to show you the picture of this other, that other little small one, the lady, the uh, Hispanic lady that she had, and where you have to dig through the pile because a lot of people are not going to dig through a pile of stuff. And a lot of, yeah. just to get in the store is not easy. I mean, because you have to walk through, I mean, you're going through stuff and then all of a sudden there's a guy has a beer there. You know, like you find, you know, like just, sometimes the best, like a... the best thrift stores are, or the best charity shops, like are the ones yeah. that you walk in and everything is just a tip. It's just not organized at all. Yeah, they, the, they're playing like uh, uh, Mexican ranch music. Ran they call it ranchero music. It's like with this brass. It's like like it's just loud music, and you're just like. You know, you have no idea. They're watching these novella shows on TV and they're, they're blasting it and they have a baby crying. They have a dog barking in the store. You know, I mean, they haven't I got know time it sounds very pick and sell on eBay. Yeah, they're not. They're, they're having they're not arguments in the store. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, yeah they're, they're, they're talking to their family that's in El Salvador on the, you know, on like this, you know, whatever it is. They're not thinking about eBay or they have no idea. They're just like, here, uh, $10, $5, you know. Yeah. And then, and it. then, but you just, and also, you know, and one other thing too is, like I said, with the personal relationships, you know, go learn how, be, don't be afraid to be gentle. I, I, I see a lot of people make this mistake. They try to get, especially with, you know, they want to get rough with these ladies, you know, like, oh, come on, like, yeah, do, do five dollars, you know, not 10. Come on. It's too, you know, yeah. If they want to sell it to you for the lower price, they will. Getting rough with people. Because then they don't want to, they're not going to call, like I said, that one of the lady who, um, I let her just give me a price. And then if it's too high, I'll just give her a look and I'll be like, you know, I don't think I'm going to do well. I'll tell her 
why I'm not going to be able to get so much. I say, you know what? This is the old label. I don't think I'm going to be able to get a lot of money for it. And then they'll, and then if they understand, they'll come down. But if you're yeah. like, so it's like, oh, $100, like, ah, I'll give you 50 They get turned off, and then they just, yeah. you know, you got to know how it's to like, be gentle with them. Negotiate, but nicely, you know, in a nice way. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, yeah, exactly. It, nicely. But but you can be firm, but just, you have to have a, because when you have, when you want to buy something for less, I always say, tell people this, like when they're talk, you know, when they're dealing with it, have a reason why you, you think it's worth 50 and not a hundred. Not point. just like, ah, I don't, because a lot of times people are like, I'll give you 50. If, if you go back to it and say, you know what, maybe you didn't watch this. When you were pricing this item, maybe you didn't notice that it has a little crack on the bottom. You know what? I might have to get it fixed. You know, you could always find something wrong with anything. Yeah. You know, maybe when and you'll say it like this. You say it to the, make them, in you nice, know, get nice them out of it. You're not criticizing yeah, you say, maybe, that stuff. You just, but you yeah, just maybe you overlook that out. Yeah, maybe you overlook this mustard sting. You know what I mean? <laughs> maybe you overlook it when you were making your You're price. And then that. once they once they see a flaw in it, even if it's a in a minor insignificant flaw, it's like they feel obligated. Okay, now I got to go to two. To seventy. All right, let's meet in the middle of seventy-five. Yeah. yeah. Instead of just like bullying, bullying doesn't work. Yeah, it's not what you say; it's how you say it, isn't it? I knew a guy. I could do. A, we could do a whole nother show. I have a guy who <laughs> knows how to just. He did. It, it's like it's almost. It's like Shakespearean. It's like poetry. He knows how to speak to people, and then he just got a guy to like drop his price, and I'm like, John, how how did you? You know, but just some people have that. They know how to, you yeah, know, yeah, totally communicate. Totally. Thank you, Rob. It's been fascinating Thanks. chatting to you about your uh, life and thrifting and New York and all that stuff. It's been really interesting, and I very much appreciate you taking the time to come on our podcast. Um, where Anytime. can people Hopefully we'll do find it again. you? Where can okay? Where can so. Yeah, I'll put that. I have the, if somebody wants to contact me, especially if somebody, let's say somebody in the UK and they're saying, well, I found this beautiful uh, men's sport coat, blazers, you know, suit, and they want to know something about it. I'm at Bob's Blazers and Vintage. I, I don't know, maybe somebody, if you could put a link or something or whatever, if you want. I'll put a link. I'll put a um, link underneath on the okay. thing. Yeah. And I, I had a that show Instagram, right? with, yes, that's on Instagram. And then I had a show on YouTube. With, uh, it was on the Flippin' Goodies channel, and I was a co-host with the other gentleman that was on Dumpster Diving Dad. Oh yeah. Um, we, yeah, he we was a co-host on the show, and um, what was it saying? Um, so we we just put the show on hiatus. Not totally. We haven't we haven't done the show live stream with the three of us. We haven't done the show in a couple of months, but um. If you want, I mean, I don't know if anybody wants to go back and watch the old ones, but if you want to maybe subscribe to it, or I'll let you know, and I'm sure you'll be more than you happy never to know. promote it. You, know, you might come back and um, you know do another show in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Right. But the Instagram yeah. is what I usually check. So if somebody okay. finds something, or if you find vintage T-shirts, somebody wants to you know, oh, does this look original? Be You know, just whatever it is. If you just say you're friends with Chris, then you're a friend of mine. Excellent. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate it. Right. Thank you, everybody, for watching here on YouTube. And thank you if you are listening on Apple Music, uh, Alexa or Google or what else? Um, Spotify. Appreciate your listening. If you do take the time just to give us um, a quick review on one of those channels, that would be great because that helps a lot. And uh, we are done for today. Thanks again, Rob, and everybody else watching. I appreciate it. And we'll speak to you again soon, and we'll see you on the next podcast. Take care, everybody. That's it for today's episode of the Everything Reselling Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, to follow, or to subscribe wherever you're watching or listening to this podcast. And we'll see you on the next episode.